looking at this quote from Ali, he says, I am American. I am the part you won't recognize, but get used to me. Black, confident, cocky. My name, not yours. My religion, not yours. My goals, my own. Get used to me. Now, the reason that that speaks so many volumes is due to the fact that America will only recognize black people whenever they need them or whenever it will benefit them. This is when you will always hear people in America say like, oh, we're all in this together. And it's like, all who? Since when? Because last time I checked, every time that black people protest, we all weren't in that protest. The last time that you've had a multitude of black people get shot when they were unarmed, we all weren't in that together. Whenever black people ended up being named, at least for the second time in history, as extremists and terrorists, we all weren't in that together. And whenever there was a black eye that magically, right, gets put there, and black people are to blame for that black eye magically we all aren't behind that black eye so like i said before it's, it's always funny to me seeing uh caucasian individuals always state that this is our country and we are all in this fight together because no we're not we didn't take this country we didn't rob this country we didn't annihilate almost to extinction the native people of this land that was you hear me clearly america is not a racist country is have blacks been pitted against asians we need the black community to realize that the that black people are hurting Asians and they need to speak out of, uh, in their own community. Well, angered by anti-Asian hate, police say this man decided to attack a white woman to get even, but he assaulted an Asian woman by mistake. Communities are not reporting these incidences. We don't want to cause more trouble, more attention to our community. And that guy just said he sells cocaine. We heard a guy parked in his car yelling from his window like, Keep walking, you need to get away from that store. Taunts quickly turned racial and included an obscene hand gesture. One step closer to justice for the Gile family. Two 16-year-olds accused of starting the fire that killed five members of the same family will now be tried as adults. Another one. We need to address, well, first of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country. If everybody watching this lady on the phone, she accused me of stealing her son's phone. Followed me outside the store. First, she was eyeing me in the store. As soon as her son happened to lose her phone, I guess I was around looking for blinds and she started looking at me. Did everybody I'm involved in, I understand. When she racially profiled me, her son found the phone. Her son found it though, it was in the car. Her son found it in the car. So now I'm going to push charges. Ma'am, may I have your name, please? May I have your name, please, ma'am? So tell people about the shirt. Tell everyone I'm racist, and these are my four, my four black children. Hello. I know, I'm very racist. So what's up? Nothing. Why are you here today? Because I want my kids to go back to school. I will teach my grandkids to hate Hey, if you know someone who is white and or Caucasian and racist, and you want them to stop and be gone, just yell out, bitch, be gone. Or better yet, try our brand new product, Bitch, You're Fired. Yes, this product is flying off of store shelves and getting white people fired and apologizing like so. It was not, it had nothing to do with the people there for the Black Lives Matter because I was also chanting Black Lives Matter. A former officer who claimed that a gunman shot her. Investigators say a bullet hit her protective vest, but say she lied about who fired it. I'm innocent of all charges and anything else is no comment. It needs to be referred to my attorney. Indictment says grand jurors charged Sherry Melissa Hall with the offense of making a false statement, namely, quote, that the accused encountered an unknown person described by the accused as black male in a green shirt on Camellia Court at approximately midnight. This is for everyone you've killed! England, murderer! Hold your fire! This man isn't black! I'm happy, Kwanzaa. Explain that to me. I just want to know why you're doing it. Why are you defacing the black, black history in the D.C.? Somebody's sitting there. I separated it.
A mural of a black icon, Paul Robeson, a 20th century singer, actor, and civil rights activist, was the face in the U Street Corridor Sunday night. The video shows a person with a mustache and wearing a stocking cap covering images of Robeson with silver paint spray. Robeson, who died in 1976, was criticized during the McCarthy era for his communist belief and his politics are often dissected during discussions about his legacy. A renaissance man, he was a college football hero who became lionized for his rich bass voice and performances of Old Man River. Robeson praised the Soviet Union, visiting the nation under Joseph Stalin back in 1930s. Quote, here, I am not a Negro, but a human being for the first time in my life. I walk in full human dignity. In the United States, Robeson was integrated by the House of Un-American Activities Committee at the height of McCarthyism in the 1950s. Quote, you are non-patriots and you are the un-Americans and you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Robeson was an unrepentant Stalinist. Rutgers should acknowledge that. Yet for his music and his leftist politics, many considered Robeson the son of an enslaved person who spoke out against fascism abroad and Jim Crow at home, a towering figure of a past century. Quote, my father captured the imagination of the black community, which forced the larger community to accept him as a hero. And this was stated by Paul Robeson Jr., who stated this back in 1989 to the Washington Post. Quote, dad was a father of civil rights, a symbol of our culture, athletic, and political strengths. Taylor, who stated that he worked at a D.C. charter school, was angry about the vandalism. Robeson isn't as popularly known as figures such as Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., but the wall that honored him had been ruined. Quote, he's one of those figures we don't talk about. To deface his picture, it was very disrespectful. It later stated that repairing the mural will cost around $1,000 and will require up to 30 hours of work. Those interested in helping should reach out to the Art Block, that is Art B-L-O-C, on Instagram. A quote attributed to Robeson above the mural image remains undamaged. Quote, I make no separation between my work as an artist and my work as a human being. So regardless of however you want to categorize it, right, you can categorize it as hate. You can categorize it as anti-black. You can categorize it as racism. The point is the fact that you have a black man who at a point in time in history was a part of America. He was a part of football. He was a part of the, you know, the athletics. He was a part of the culture of black people, meaning that rich music, some of which we've all heard. And on top of having all of those things, he also stood for black people using the amount of light that he had in order to go around the world, visit and see different people. And within being able to do that, he could compare and contrast the treatment that he received in America versus the treatment abroad. And when you happen to listen to a lot of the black men that were a part of the war, they stated that when they lived in America, they were just seen as, you know, pretty much 10th class citizens, right? They were just coming through the back door, sit at the back of the bus, last to be served, last ones to be, you know, in line. You know, it, it was all of that you know, type of thing, no matter how much they worked, no matter how many jobs that they had, no matter where they lived, no matter what their education is, no matter where they drive, no matter how much taxes they paid or overpaid, no matter how they were treated specifically by the United States and the United States government, and no matter what history has shown, right? But then when they went abroad, when they went and they fought for the same country who hated them and shown them uh, this type of hate a multitude of different ways. They went over to Russia. They went over to Germany. They went over to a lot of those European countries and they stated that they were celebrated. They were 
welcome in with open arms, something that they were never able to get and receive in the United States. Because when those same war heroes, right, that fought for the war, that were getting appreciated over there in Europe, once they came back over to America, it was business as usual. They didn't look at them as a hero. They didn't see them as a part of the the military, a part of the makeup that makes the United States uh, so great, right? That makeup, that great fabric. They looked at them as they always looked at them. They treated them the same way that they've always treated them. So when I hear that he, in fact, you know, uh, took a liking to Stalin and maybe some of the things uh, dealing with communism, I can understand. Because when you compare what another country is doing and how it is that they would treat you versus where you were born and where you were raised and where your history is, you're going to tend to go over to the people that are welcoming you with open arms, that are treating you with dignity, that are treating you as a human being, that 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 are treating you as somebody that's not less than. They're not just looking at you just simply because of the color of your skin and making laws, rules, and regulations and all of those things. So I completely understand why a lot of the elders of before, the the older black men, some came back, some of them stayed over in Europe, and they never looked back. So again, knowing the things that I know about this man, I'm very much intrigued, and I would actually like to learn a lot more about him. But the point still remains that this showcases how you have anti-blackness, you have racism, you have hatred, you have bigotry, you have discrimination that still happens directly in this country, no matter what black people have done in past, present or future, no matter what black people have done to contribute to America. Right. And usually when you say that, you'll have some of the others. They'll come. Oh, what what have you guys contributed? You guys don't have any culture. You guys don't have this. You guys don't have that. Well, black Americans have contributed enough to the point where it has allowed a comfortable living for not just other right black people, meaning those from Africa, those from the islands. But it has made it comfortable enough for other people. It could be people from Latin America, right? It could be um, people from Asian countries, some either fair or some that are pretty dark. It has made it easier for a lot of individuals to actually live here. But due to the fact that we've made it easy for them, they turn around and they make it harder for us. Because within us, doing all of the sacrificing, people just get to come through the door that's already open. So they don't respect an open door. People actually respect a closed door because it takes an amount of effort to actually turn the knob, to push the door open, to potentially find a key that only works with that specific door, but you got to go through a hundred or a thousand keys in order to find that one key. So again, because that door is open and because it's been opened and it stayed open, The people who have had to open that door, stand behind that door, right? The people that have had to repair that door, the people that have had to do so much to that door just to get it to where it is, where it just, it's a consistent revolving thing. They are the most disrespected people. It's a thankless job. The other thing that's a thankless job is actually being a part of the military for the same country that has made laws, rules, and regulations against you due to the fact of, not because of how it is that you act, but due to the fact of your skin color. But like I said before, if people actually want to know the history of how it is that black people were treated directly in this country, pretty much everybody watch these videos are grown. They can look up a lot of this information if they want to. If not, then they'll just stay ignorant, deaf and dumb. They'll continue to make the exact same comments that they've always been making, Time and time and time and time again.
But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that's stated in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.